So in this video, we're going to go over the binomial, geometric, and Poisson distributions. Here, just sort of an introduction and how you use these and maybe how they differ from each other. Okay, so we're going to start with the binomial distribution here. Our setup here is we have n trials. Each trial is the probability of success p, and we're going to assume that each trial is independent, and we're looking for the probability of getting exactly k successes out of the n trials. So you could think about I have a coin that I flip, um, n times over and over again, the probability of getting ahead on that each flip is p, that makes the probability of getting a tail 1 minus p. So this doesn't have to equal 50%. Maybe you weight the coin somehow, so 30% of the time it comes up tails and 70% of the time it comes up heads or something like that. And we're trying to figure out if you did, say, 50 coin flips, you could find sort of the expected number of sort of heads that you would get out of those coin flips, but we want to figure out what the probability is you get exactly some amount, or you know, up to less than equal to some amount, or something like that. So the general formula here, if we want to get exactly k successes, that probability is this thing here. This is n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. So there's some formula here. Um, when we calculate these, at least the class we're doing, um, you won't really need to know this formula. This is built into your calculator. Something that's nice to understand, but probably isn't necessary really to do calculations. Uh, a couple things about the binomial distribution that are just sort of nice to know. The mu, this is our average here. This is n times p. Um, so it's just you expect, like if p was one third, if a third of the time you get ahead, the expected number of heads is, well, one third times the number of flips, so a third of the flips. And that should feel fairly intuitive there. The standard deviation is going to be less intuitive. It's the square root of n times p times the probability of a failure, which is 1 minus p. So n times p times q, people might say, instead of the 1 minus p sometimes. So that's binomial. Let's do an example. So here you're going to take a multiple choice exam. There's 30 questions four options per question, so you either answer A, B, C, D, and instead of trying to read any of the questions and think about what's going on, we're just going to flat out guess. So I'll say, you know, I'll guess B, and then D, and then A, and then B again, or whatever. Don't even need to read, just fill in, you know, particular answers here. So here, our probability of getting a success, that is a correct question here, is one-fourth. Probably missing a question would be three-fourths. And we want to find the probability, first of all, that you get exactly ten questions correct. So we've got a binomial distribution. We're getting 30 trials here. We have a one-fourth probability success, and we're looking for exactly 10 successes. You could use that formula on the previous slide, but what you can do with the calculator is do binome PDF. So P, you put the P here, that's sort of the exact number of um, successes. So we have 30 successes, or 30 trials, one-fourth probability of success, and then 10 successes. And that spits out a number like 0 0.0909. I mean, it's approximately, that means I rounded this. So let's look at what that looks like here. Um, let's do that there. So we're going to do binome PDF. Maybe let's move this over here. Let's do second distribution. Um, it's toward the bottom, so I'm going to hit arrow up to get there. I think a little bit more quickly. So it's binome PDF. Enter. Again, I did second and then the variables key, but I'm looking for the distribution in the blue in this one, D-I-S-T-R. And then I just put in 30, comma, you could do 1 fourth as 0.25, but you can just, you know, put a fraction here, 1 fourth, or it's really going to do 1 divided by 4. And I'm looking for exactly 10 successes. Close that off. And I get 0 0.090, and that 6 would round that 8 up to a 9. So something like 9% chance of getting exactly 10 correct here, if we just guess. Okay, now here's something else. What about the probability of getting, say, 10 or more correct? So maybe this is, you know, you need to get at least 10 correct so that you pass a class or something. Um, so we want to find the probability of getting 10 or more, because if you get 10 correct, that'd be one thing, but 11 would work too, or 12. So what that's going to be is we're going to set this up as 1 minus the probability of getting nine or fewer. So at most nine, less than equal to nine successes here. So to do the less than or equal to, you do the binome CDF. This is cumulative here. Um, and so we're going to do 30 trials, one-fourth probability of success, 
up to nine, well, successes, and those are the ones we're taking away. So we do all the possibilities, and then we subtract off the lead part. And claim here, this is approximately 0.1966. So let's calculate this here. So we get one minus the binome CDF. Again, it's second, and you hit the variables key. And then we want the CDF for this one because we're looking for multiple sort of less than or equal to nine successes. Here we're looking for exactly 10. So we wanted the PDF on the previous one. This one is CDF. We do 30 trials, one fourth probability of success, and we're going to subtract off up to nine successes. And that spits out the one, nine, six, and then that nine would round that five up to a six. So approximately 0.1966, maybe you're looking at about 20% chance here. If you just guess, of getting 10 or more correct. Okay, so that's binomial. Now we're going to look at the geometric distribution. So kind of a similar setting, but you know, it's sort of a little bit different. So here, I'm going to say we're just going to keep doing trials over and over again um, as a setup. So there may be an unlimited number of trials. There'll be a condition where we'll stop here. But in theory, you could do a billion trials every time, or even more than that. Each trial, again, will have a probability success P, so I'm going to flip my coin over and over again, and sort of this, each trial is independent. Sorry, we need that too. And what we're doing is we're looking for the number of trials into the first success. So what we're going to do with these number of trials is we're just going to flip a coin over and over and over again until we get the first head. So it could be tail, 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 head. You could get, you know, head right away and no tails. Could be you get a billion tails and then the first head. I mean, that'd be really unlikely most of the time, but it could happen in theory. Okay, now our formula for getting the first success on the kth trial is what well, looks like this. So this P, this is the kth trial, has to be a success. And then all of the previous other trials had to be failures. That is, they're 1 minus P, and there are K minus 1 other trials. So it's 1 minus P to the K minus 1 times P. So that's a pretty easy to understand formula, really. Our average, that is the average number of trials we'll get, the mu, here our mean, and it turns out to be 1 over p. Um, with these formulas here, we may get another video up to sort of describe where this comes from. Not something you need to know for this class, but it might be interesting to see how that is calculated. Um, standard deviation, same thing. You shouldn't really understand where this comes from right now. It's square root 1 minus p over p. But we may get a video up to sort of show you how you would go about calculating that. Use it some more complicated things. And here, I mean, you'd get, you just look up the formula now and plug in P, sort of the way to approach this. Okay, let's do an example. So example geometric here, you have to pass a placement exam to say to sign up for a course. You can take the placement time exam as many times as you would like to. Each time we're going to assume you have a 30% chance of passing the exam. Now, note this might not really be the case if you're taking, say, a math placement exam. It might be that the more and more of these you take, you sort of get more in practice and your chance of passing goes up as you go along. Or I suppose it could be you get frustrated and you don't focus as much and the chance goes down. Or it could be after you do a few attempts, you decide, hey, I'm not getting this, maybe I should study for a bit. And you know that might increase your, hopefully increases your chance of passing the exam. But for our sake, we're going to assume you have a 30% chance of passing each exam. Maybe this is a scenario where you're just flat out guessing, and the answer is like change each time here. And you're trying to figure out, well, how many times do I have to just guess? Like, is this worth it? If maybe I can just flat out guess six times, that's more efficient in some sense than studying. Probably not a good learning strategy, but it might get you through the placement exam. OK, so what we're going to do, first of all, is find the probability you pass the exam on the fifth attempt. That is not sort of exactly the fifth attempt. So you have to sort of not pass on the first, second, third, fourth, and then pass on the fifth. So on the calculator, we're going to do a geometric, geomet PDF. And what you put in is you put in the probability of success, which is 0.3, and then the trial that you get your first success on. We're saying the fifth in this case. And that will spit out a number here. So let's show that. So it's second. Again, the distributions or the variables key. Geometric, I think it's the bottom one here. Well, it's the PDF and CDF. So this one is exactly five attempts. So we want PDF. And then you just put in, I'm going to do 0.3 instead of 0 0.3. Five. And this is going to spit out an answer here. 
note here, we got exactly 0.07203. So here I put in equals instead of a squiggly equals because this is exactly equal. Most of the other answers I give, I've been going to four decimal places. Here I figure, well, I can get one more decimal place and then it's exact. It's probably worth that trade-off here. Um, but, you know, it's not a huge issue there. So I'm going to put in equals because this is actually exact. Uh, next question here, we want to find the probability that you need no more than four attempts to pass the exam. So that is, you pass on either the first, second, third, or fourth attempt. And this is going to be a geomet, and again, CDF for cumulative. Probability of success is 0.3. We're going to go up to 4. Here, note, we're looking for less than or equal to 4, so we don't have to do the 1 minus. That's sort of with a greater than. Um, and so let's calculate this here. So we go second distribution. We get the geomet CDF. We do 0.3 probability of success up to four trials. And we hit enter. And note, we get again an exact answer of 0.7599. So that's our answer. I'm going to put, put an actual equal sign here. You could write approximately with a squiggly equal of like 0 0.76. Might view that as I've got about a three and four chance here of passing on the first one of the first four attempts. OK, so that's geometric. The last one here in this sort of slide set is the Poisson distribution. So this one is a bit more abstract, really, than the binomial or geometric. There's not sort of this nice interpretation here. Um, the way it gets described sometimes is that, but sort of where it comes from is that we're kind of trying to develop this here. So our idea here. So here's just an example. So suppose we're running a grocery store and you sell on average, oh, that's a typo, should be O-N, on average, of two bottles of oregano per day. Now. I have no idea if that number is at all reasonable, but I just sort of want a small number. So every day, you know, you sell two bottles of oregano here, um, you say on average. Now that's going to vary from day to day. Now you could split your day into 24 hours. So we're going to assume this grocery store is open 24 hours a day. We're going to split our day into 24 hours. And then we're going to make a probability of selling a bottle of oregano in any one hour is well, we sell two a day over 24 hours. So it should be two out of 24. Now that's 1 12th. I'm not going to simplified. I'm just going to keep that as 2 over 24 to make it match up with things later on. Note, for this to work, for what we're going to do, we're making the assumption that the likelihood that you sell this bottle of oregano at any given hour is the same and independent of every other hour. So that's probably not true. You probably don't sell as many bottles of oregano at 3 a.m. as you do at, say, I don't know, 6 p.m. Or day of the week might matter here. We're on, say, the weekends. Maybe more people go grocery shopping. It may shift. We're making the assumption that every hour is equally likely to sell a bottle of oregano here, which probably isn't true, but that's the assumption we'll make. Um, so we're going to view the probability of selling K bottles of oregano in a day. So essentially, it's a binomial with 24 trials. And each trial having probability of success 2 out of 24. So it'd be almost exactly that, except in reality this isn't quite true because you can't, you, it's possible you might sell more than one bottle of oregano in an hour. So maybe two people buy a bottle of oregano sort of in one hour. And then that binomial says success, failure, but then you sort of got two successes in one trial, which doesn't really make sense. But as long as sort of the number of successes is really small here, this 2 versus the 24, then the probability of selling two in one hour is small enough. We can kind of ignore that here. Um, so that's the general idea. Here. Now, oh yeah, and then each trial here is really one of the given hours during the day. So that'll get you a, a calculation here, or a, a binomial. You could do probabilities. But would be even better here, we can make this a better example, where you could split the day instead, in, instead of into 24 hours, into 24 times 60, which is going to be 1,440 minutes. So then the probability of selling a bottle of oregano in one minute is 2 out of 1,440. So any given minute. Um, and then you could view the probability of selling k bottles of oregano in as a day. This is then a binomial random variable with 1,440 trials, and each trial having probability of success 2 out of 1,440. So each trial here is one minute out of the day. And what's going to happen here is the Poisson distribution is really what's going to occur if you split the day up into sort of an infinite number of time periods. So instead of 24 time periods and then 1440, 
What if you split your day up into a billion time periods sort of a thing? That's really going to give you a Poisson distribution here. So, I mean, that's, generally this is going to work a lot better if you have a small number of successes that you're looking for, or a small number of average successes sort of over this time period here. So let's do a couple of those calculations just to kind of see um, what occurs here. So we're going to do a binomial. So let's do second distribution. We're going to do binomial, PDF. So the first one we did, uh, we had 24 trials, hours each day, and the probability of success was 2 out of 24. Whoops, something went funny there. 2 out of 24. And we're looking for getting, well, we didn't say yet. Let's suppose we want to find the probability that you sell exactly three bottles of oregano during the day. So we get three successes here. So if you calculate that, you get 0.1884. So that's the probability of getting exactly three, selling exactly three bottles of oregano during the day. If you assume that sort of the way it works is each hour you have a two out of 24 chance of selling a bottle of oregano. And you can only sell at most one bottle per hour. Now a better thing to do is we replace this hour with minutes. So we can go up and do our binome PDF here. And now we're going to have 1,440 trials. And let's see, we have a 2 out of 1,440 probability of success. And we're looking for the probability of getting exactly three successes here. And what happens is we get something that's kind of close here. So we got 0 0.18057 from 0 0.1884. Here's a kind of close. Note this went down. That's not going to happen all the time here. It kind of depends on how certain things um, weigh out with each other. But this is really sort of, you know, it's about right. Now you could, if you wanted to, get even more precise here and think about maybe every second of the day instead of every minute, every second. And then you would get 1440 minutes times 60 seconds. I don't even really need to know what that is. I'm going to do 2 divided by, no, I have to have my parentheses here, 1440 times 60. If I didn't put these parentheses around the denominator, it would be really 2 times 60 over 1440 equivalently. Or I could leave off the parentheses and do a divide by 60. And now we're going to do 3. So we sort of split every second. And now you'll notice I get 0 0.1804. That's still pretty close to every minute. So you're getting answers that are getting closer and closer. What the Poisson distribution is going to do is it's going to be sort of the limiting value of this. So if you did an infinite number of trials, it's sort of what limits this. So this is kind of like if you've seen continuously compounding interest, here where you say, well, what if we compound our interest, you know, monthly, you make this amount through the year. Daily, if you pay interest every day, it sort of is a little bit better for you. What if you paid second every second you know at some point but there's a, a limit to how good this can be and that's the continuously compounding interest this is kind of the same idea here actually it's quite related because there's sort of an e we'll see in a bit that pops up in both really okay now the poisson distribution here in this situation what you would do is this is a pdf we're looking for an exact number of successes and all you would do is say well we're looking for two successes on average per day so some time period and we're looking for the probability of getting exactly three. So if we have two per day, and we have exactly three, and then basically this is going to do the binome PDF split into a whole bunch of like an infinite number of slices here per day. That's not, okay, that's not really what it's going to do underneath, but it's equivalent to that. And what you'll get when you do that, you'll notice something really close to this. So the difference of going to an infinite number is 0.18044. Instead of every second, it's what the one, two, three, four, five, six digit after the decimal point changes here. So it's pretty close there. That's really what the Poisson PDF is doing here. Um, there's a couple of uses for this Poisson distribution. One is you might have a situation where you think really it's the right model, is that you can split things up infinitely often, and so that you don't really want to do every second because you know it could be happening in between. So it's sort of that's the thing that makes sense. The other thing, which is probably perhaps more realistic here, is, okay, you know that this Poisson is an approximation, but you don't have to go and do this sort of exact calculation here. So for instance, um, if you think about, well, what's going on with these calculations, this binome PDF had a binomial coefficient here. So it was some binomial coefficient. Now that had a small bottom number 
that's not going to be that bad to calculate, really. But then you had a p to the k. Let's go back and look at this. Here are our binome. So where this makes sense, whoops, one more slide back, is where this, um, this k is small. So n choose k, if k is small, this actually isn't that bad to calculate. p to the k is not going to be bad to calculate, but 1 minus p to the n minus k. So 1 minus p, that's going to be some number. I think it was point, or no, it was, well, it's some number here. It's going to be quite small, but you have to take this to the n minus k. So if n gets really, really big, you've got to take a number to a really big power, and that could take a lot of computation. So imagine I give you point. 183 or something, and you need to take that to the billionth power. You have to multiply it by itself a billion times here. Um, there are more efficient ways you can do that, but still, it's not ideal. So you can use a Poisson distribution to sort of approximate a binomial here and just get sort of close to the right answer. Okay, so Poisson properties. Um, now, generally, what's going to be is lambda. This is the number of successes per time period. We're going to say this is the parameter of the distribution. So whoops, again, this symbol here, this is lambda. This is a Greek letter, lowercase lambda. And it's the average number of successes per time period. So you just need to make sure that you're asking for a question, when you ask a question, that you're looking for the number of successes. Like if it's given as lambda is, we get two successes per day, then your answer has to be in number of successes per day. So the question, you could convert, like if you knew there were two successes per day, Maybe you could convert that to 60 successes per month. And then you could answer, you know, what's the probability you sell exactly or at most this many bottles of oregano in a month or do by week or however you want to convert. But they have to be consistent with each other. We'll see one about that later on. Problem dealing with that in a bit. Okay, so they're probably getting exactly k successes in one time period. Turns out to be lambda the k. This e I sort of talked about like compound interest, e to the negative lambda over k factorial. Again, you don't really need to memorize this formula. The um, Poisson PDF and Poisson CDF have these built in, um, but it may be interesting to see. Um, we can also hopefully get a video up describing where that came from. Not that bad. Um, also, the mean is lambda. Now, this really makes sense. Sort of, we're kind of saying the average number of successes per time period. If you do one time period, you should expect the lambda successes. Okay, that that should really make sense. Now part that you have to show is that this particular um, probability here or for k exactly k successes would actually give this particular result and that would work out. We can look at that in a different video, but not necessary for this course. Um, standard deviation turns out to be square root of lambda. Here, again, that's something I would just say at this point, memorize or look up when you need it. Okay, so example of a Poisson distribution question. Um, so let's suppose here um, from past experience, you have an instructor that knows that a cell phone rings in class an average of two times per month. So let's say twice a month you have a cell phone go off in the middle of class. And what we want to know here is, first of all, find the probability that exactly three cell phones ring in class during a month. So note here we're saying average is twice per month, and the question we're asking is probably exactly three in one month. So these have to match. So it's the average in one month, and we're trying to figure out the number in one month. And what this is going to be is a Poisson, and it's a PDF, exactly three. Two is our average, we're looking for three. And I think we actually just did that calculation. It's 0 0.1804, here, round it. So there's a Poisson here. Um, next one, if a class meets 16 times in a month, find the probability that more than one cell phone rings in a single class. So there's a bit of a weirdness here in that we're given an average of twice per month, but we're asked for the probability that more than one rings in a class, not in a month here. So we're going to do a little bit of conversion. And the way you'll do that, first of all, we're looking for more than one. So if you do one minus the probability of up to one. And now what we need to do here is we need to think about how many, what's the average number of cell phone rings per class? Well, per class, so we have twice per month, and if we meet 16 times a month, that should be 2 divided by 16. And then we're going to go up to 1 because this is a CDF, so less than or equal to 1. So we're doing 1 minus the probability of up to 1 ring. That should give the probability of more than 1. And we can calculate that out on our calculator as 1 minus second distribution. Let's do our Poisson CDF. 
2 divided by 16. Okay, I know that's 1 eighth, but calculator can figure that out for us. Up to 1, and this spits out 0 0.0072 if I run. So a less than 1% chance seems fairly unlikely here, but, you know, could happen once in a while. Now, one, so this is, in some sense, the end, although I'll point out here, this example probably isn't really that great, because one of the things we need for a Poisson distribution here is we need sort of the sort of cell phone rings in this class to be independent of each other. So sort of each second, there's the same chance of a cell phone ring in class. Now, I suspect that's probably not the case, because if, say, a cell phone goes off in class, probably a certain percentage of the class are then going to check their cell phones and make sure that they're not going to go off. Like, oh, hey, it reminds me that this could happen. So my guess is the true probability here is actually a little bit lower, but it gives us an approximation here. So I'm saying that if, if a cell phone went off, if one cell phone went off in class, it's likely that, you know, people check. And it's probably a little bit less likely than normal that the second cell phone would go off. Or I suppose it could be the case that people go and they play with their settings and they mess it up and somehow make it more likely or they hit a button that makes its cell phone beep or uh, I don't know. Probably not, but I, I suspect it makes things good. Okay, so it's going to end this video here.